Church, how about this day that we get to worship our Lord and Savior today? Hallelujah! Amazing, amazing. This is the seventh straight week of great weather on Sundays. I mean, God is really blessing us. I remember spring times where it would only rain on Sundays. I mean, I remember spring times where we would have seven straight Sundays with rain, but here we are, seven, I mean, again, not a cloud in the sky. This is truly uh, amazing. God is blessing us. We want to encounter the Lord today. There has been a lot of spiritual warfare going on around us. Does anybody else feel that? A little spiritual warfare around us? Well, Ephesians chapter 6 gives us a great strategy in standing against the devil's schemes. God calls us to take our stand against the devil's schemes and that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and the authorities of this dark world. So we want to take our stand together today. I want to invite you to stand and uh, Elder Fred Hartley is going to lead us in putting on the armor. Let's all stand together and put on the armor of God so that we can take our stand against the devil's schemes. And I brought my helper with me. This is little Isaac. And we're going to put on the armor. You know, this is a good habit to, to do this every day. And so in each of the different pieces of armor represent what Jesus does for us in his protection. So will you put on the armor with me today? I put on the belt of truth. I put on the belt of truth. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the truth. I put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. I put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. Jesus is the gospel. Jesus is the gospel. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. Jesus is the righteous one. Jesus is the righteous one. I take up the shield of faith. I take up the shield of faith. Jesus is the faithful one. Jesus is the faithful one. I put on the helmet of salvation. I put on the helmet of salvation. Jesus is my savior. Jesus is my savior. I take up the sword of the spirit. I take up the sword of the spirit. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. And I take up all prayer. I take all prayer. Because Jesus is my intercessor. Because Jesus is my intercessor. And now we stand complete in Christ. We stand and the enemy cannot touch us. And we stand complete Hallelujah. in Christ. And the enemy Hallelujah. cannot touch us. Praise the Lord. Thank 
been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, but still I'm falling to nine. My, my couldn't earn it, my don't deserve it. To 
Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. All sufficient sacrifice. All sufficient sacrifice. So freely, so freely given. It's such a price. Our redemption, heaven's gates swing wide. All sufficient sacrifice and all sufficient sacrifice. So freely given, such a price. But our redemption's heaven's gates swing wide. There is power in the name of Jesus. We let it, we sing it out. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh. Every chain, break every chain, break every. We join together in faith today. There is power in the name of Jesus. Wonder working power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. church. We pray that over our home. We pray that over our families. We pray that over all the prodigals. God, we pray that over our nation. God, we pray that over our pain. God, we pray that over all the darkness, God. We pray that over the city of Wilburn, Jesus. God, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Jesus, break every chain today. Break every chain in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You are our hope, Jesus. You are our hope, Jesus. You are our hope, Jesus. Let's sing, There's an Army Rising. There's an army rising up, oh, from the redeemed. Oh, there's an army rising up. Oh, there's an army rising Break every chain, break every chain. As we put in the armor today, come on, there's an army rising up. We put on the armor of God. We stand. We stand. We stand with the Lord today. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's an army Every chain, break 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 every chain,
Jesus. Can you say it with me today? Jesus. Who is the King of Kings? Who is the Lord of Lords? Who is the bread of life? Who is the resurrection and the life? Who is the way, the truth, and the life? Who is the true vine? Who is the good shepherd? Who is the wonderful counselor? Who is the almighty God? Who is the everlasting father? Who is the prince of peace? Hallelujah. Can we give him some praise this morning, church? Let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. 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 We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We want to press in this morning. James 4 says that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You see, it's the proud that say, I can do it on my own. But it's the humble that says, I need a higher power. I need the Lord, our God. Lord, we need you. We want to press into this song. We want to sing this. Lord, I need you. Would you join with me in humbling yourself? Express your need for the Lord. You're my hope. 
us on all sides we will not be shaken you sing that we will not be shaken we stand together we will not be shaken that's our declaration though the battle rages we will stand and though the battle rages we will stand in the fight and though the armies rise up against us on all sides 
We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For in the hour of our darkest day. For in the hour of our darkest. We will not tremble. We won't. We will not tremble. We won't be afraid. Hope is rising. Hope is rising like the light of dawn. Oh, our God is for us. He is overcome. Come on, we trust. For we trust in our God. And through His unfailing love, oh, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Come on, we trust. Come on. Oh, for we trust in our God. And through His unfailing love, we will not be shaken. No, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For all those against us will fall. All those against him will fall. Our God is stronger. Our God is strong. He can do all things. Come on. He can. We sing that in faith. No higher name we could call. No higher name we can call. Jesus is greater. For Jesus is great. We can do all things. We can do all. All those against him. Come on, church. All those against him will fall. Our God is, our God is stronger. He can do all things. No higher name, no higher name we can call. But Jesus is greater. We can do all things. in our God and through his unfailing love oh we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken no come on we trust for we trust in our God Unfailing love, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For in the hour of our darkest day, for in the hour of our darkest, we will not tremble. Come on, we will not tremble. We won't be afraid. Hope is rising. Hope is rising like the light of dawn. Our God is, our God is for us. He is over for in the hour, for in the hour of our darkest day. We will not tremble, we will not tremble, we won't be afraid. Hope is rising like the light of dawn. For us, He is overcome. Come on, we sing. For we trust in our God, and through and through His unfailing love, oh, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We trust. Trust in our God and through His unfailing love, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Jesus, we trust in you. We trust in your unfailing love. Who could stand against us? 
nothing can stand against us because we trust in you. You are our rock, Jesus. We cannot be shaken. We put our hope in you. We fix our eyes on the unshakable king, Jesus. We love you. We love you. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. This morning I have the pleasure of bringing the word of God to us. We are starting a new series. Last week we started it, A Summer Full of Blessing. Our God is a God full of blessing from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. God loves to bless. In fact, the word blessed is used over 520 times in the whole Bible. The word curse is only used 200 times. So for every curse, there's twice as many blessings. Amen. Our God is a God of blessing. And last week, we looked at the beginning of blessing in Genesis 1 and how God made man in his image and God desires to bless man and woman. It's the only thing that he blessed. Out of all that he created, he blessed male and female and he blessed them. So God is the God that is a God of blessing and he begins the blessing. We learned last week that those who obey God are blessed by God and those who disobey God are cursed. And we looked briefly at Genesis chapter 3 and how Adam and Eve brought in cursing. I want us to look a little deeper at Genesis 3. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Genesis 3. You see, God is a God of blessing. He is. He loves to bless. But when you look at our world today, you see a lot of things that aren't blessed. You see a lot of pain. You see death. You see a virus that's going, it's a pandemic sweeping around the whole world. You see racism and anger and hatred and people pulling guns and taking their knee and sticking it on somebody else's neck for eight and a half minutes. And you, you see all this pain and you ask, how can there be a God of blessing? Where did all this come from? Well, all the pain can all be found right here in Genesis chapter 3. Again, open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3. It starts in verse 1. You see that there is a serpent, a serpent that was more crafty than anything else that God had made. You see, the devil is crafty. The devil is a weasel. The devil uh, likes to twist things. The devil is a serpent that's more crafty than any other beast. And then somehow this serpent starts to speak. And the serpent in verse 2 begins to speak to Eve. And he says, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? You see that just twisting the the craftiness of the devil in verse he, he just asked the question and then in verse two the woman and this is a mistake the woman begins to engage with this crafty serpent the the woman answers and she actually answers in quite in truth she she answers in the truth that god said do not eat of the fruit well, then in verse 4, the serpent responds in the second way, and he's, again, crafty. The serpent says, will you surely die? Are you sure you're going to die if you eat of that fruit? Again, just the craftiness of the devil and the serpent. And verse 5, for God knows that when you eat of it, you will be like him. And, and he, he says, you will be like him. And then the woman saw, this is interesting, three things that the woman had, had here. First, the woman sees that the tree was good. There was a desire of the flesh, just longing for something good. And then that it was a delight. It was the, the lust of the eyes, the delight of the eyes, and the eyes that it was enticing to her. And then that the tree was to be desired to be make one wise. And there was a longing for wisdom, for intellectual growth. 
And so the woman takes the fruit and eats of it. And then she gives it to the husband. And he eats of the fruit. Now look at what happens in verses 7 and 8. Immediately, all of a sudden, they were full of shame. And for the first time, their eyes are open. They recognize that they're naked. And then they take fig leaves. Now, if you've ever seen fig leaves, fig leaves are quite large. They're about this large. I've pulled several of them off. And you can create somewhat of a clothing, but it's, you know, the wind blows and whoa, you're in trouble. But um, they created some fig leaves to kind of cover themselves. Now, why did they do that? It's because they were ashamed. And it's, it's a natural thing to do when you make a mistake. You want to cover yourself. You want to hide. In fact, verse 8 goes on to say that when they heard the sound of God. Now, I would have loved to have heard the sound of God's footsteps. I mean, boom, boom. Boom. I don't know what it was like, but it says that they heard a sound of God walking. And what did they do? So first of all, they hid themselves from one another, but then they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. They ran. They hid. And again, it's a natural thing. I mean, I see this in my kids all the time. You can almost tell when something, they spilled a drink downstairs on the carpet. I mean, you can just see it on their faces. You can even see this in pets. I don't know uh, if you've ever seen a dog that knows he just got in the trash. Like, he's walking around with a tail between his legs and his face is drooped down low and he's just full of shit. I mean, we all know what this is like, right? Nobody likes to be caught. Nobody likes to do things that are wrong. But for the first time, Adam and Eve, they sinned, and their veil is lifted. They're naked. They're trying to cover themselves from one another and from God. And again, God blesses the obedient, and then he curses the disobedient. So, right after this, verse 9. This is amazing. Now, the people were trying to hide from God but what does God do? Does God leave them in the hiding place? No. God pursues after them. That's why that first song was so great. The reckless love of God. He goes after us. He, he pursues after. He leaves the 99 to go after the one. God goes after us. Look here in verse 9. God goes to the man and he calls out, Where are you? Now God knew where they were, but he wanted them to, to realize their sin and their shame. He wanted them to realize it. God already knew, but he wanted people to be able to respond and to repent. So he asked them, where are you? Then uh, the man says, I heard the sound. I was afraid. There's fear that comes in here. Then verse 11, he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree? Now again, God already knew that they ate, but he's asking them the question so that they can realize it themselves. How many times do we lie to ourselves, right? We tell ourselves, oh, what I'm doing isn't really that bad. Oh, what I'm, I'm right. I'm right on this issue. I'm right on this issue. We lie to ourselves. God asks us questions so that we can then realize our the the lies that we're living in and tell him the truth, which is where real repentance comes. So again, God asks them, uh, have you eaten of the tree? The man responds, <laughs> an excuse, uh, I'm good at this, you know, blaming my wife on things. The woman who gave uh, to me, she gave me the fruit of the tree. Then the Lord talks to the woman, verse 13, what is it that you have done? The woman blames the serpent. So we're really good at uh, blaming other people here. Then you get to verse 14, and this is where the curses come in. Now, why are we spending time in curses? I thought this was a series of blessing. 
we want to spend time in blessing. The reality is, all of us have disobeyed. All of us deserve curses. The moment that Adam and Eve sinned, curses were introduced to the world. Why is there virus? Why is there wars? Why are there murders? Why is there racism? It is because of curses, because of disobedience. So this is why we want to look at these verses here. Now, what is it that God curses? I love it. This is just his mercy right here. He starts off cursing the serpent. He doesn't start with cursing the one that he was talking to. He curses the serpent. He first tells the serpent, verse 14, uh, Cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field, and on your belly you shall go. I mean, what a terrible curse. You don't want to be on your belly. Dust you shall eat. I love eating. I love eating steak, hot dogs, hamburgers, ice cream. I love eating that. I don't want to eat dust. This is quite the curse. Uh, he's cursing the serpent to eat dust all the days of his life. Verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. So from here on out, the devil is at war with people. The devil is at war with you and I. One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible, John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus said, the devil comes to kill steal and destroy that is the devil's purpose he is out to kill steal and destroy but jesus comes to give life life to the fullest so the devil's out to kill the devil wants to destroy marriages the devil wants to destroy relationships between people this is what the curse is but then at the end of verse 15 you get this incredible promise he says, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The NIV puts it this way. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. You see, he's talking to the serpent and he's prophesying about Jesus here. He's speaking that the devil will bruise Jesus's heel, but Jesus will crush Satan's heel. Hey, Amen. Who's, who's excited about that? I mean, I think we need to give God some praise for that one. When G You see, this is why Galatians 3, we quoted this last week, but Jesus, it's, it's said in Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written... Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. God blesses the obedient and he curses the disobedient. Jesus was completely obedient. Jesus had no sin in his life. Jesus deserved to be blessed. Jesus lived in the blessing of his father. He lived full blessing of the Father. But Jesus surrendered the blessing and became a curse for us. Jesus hung on the cross and he took all of our curses. Every single one of our curses he took upon himself. He took what we deserve on the cross. And he defeated the curse on the cross. You see, the devil bruised his heel. There was, there was a nail that was driven through his heel. So when Jesus was on the cross, he's hanging. And it's said that when you're on the cross to get breath, you got to push up on the nail. Jesus was hanging there. And he's pushing up on the nail. And every time... The devil's bruising his heel on his feet. But every time that the devil's, that Jesus is pushing up on that nail, he's crushing Satan's head beneath him. Jesus is crushing the curse. He's crushing the curses. Every single curse that the devil brings, Jesus is crushing. 
He's crushing the curse. He's taking on all of the curses that we deserve because of disobedience. He took on the curses. So now, everybody who is in Jesus Christ, rather than God seeing you in your disobedience, God sees Jesus Christ in his obedience. And God wants to redeem the blessing. He created us all for blessing, but you don't get the blessing without Jesus Christ. Because Jesus took on the curses and Jesus crushed all the curses. Each of us have been cursed. Each of us have been cursed. We've participated in evil things that have brought curses upon us. Other people have been evil against us where we receive curses. Let's just look at some of these curses that were introduced. Verse 16, to the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. This is the first uh, mention of pain. There's been no pain up until now. Pain of childbirth. Now, ladies, I'm sorry on this one. This is, uh, my wife reminds me often how painful childbirth is. Uh, I have a low pain tolerance. Does anybody else out there uh, identify with that? I mean, I've heard about what the coronavirus testing is like. I don't want to go anywhere near, like, I am just praying that I don't get sick because I don't want to get tested like... Uh, and Emily's like, believe me, it's not as bad as childbirth. So, just pain in childbirth. Then it says that your desire shall be contrary to your husband. Oh no, like why this one? This is the first relationship problems that you see. You want to know why there's divorce? Why there's pain in relationships? It's a curse. And then that the husband will rule over you. To Adam, he says, he brings these, these, these curses. Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and you have eaten of the tree of which I command you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. The ground is cursed. In pain you, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Again, there's more pain. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you. You know, thorns and thistles are introduced. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By sweat your face you shall eat bread till you're returning to the ground. You see, there's these curses and they're introduced. I don't know if this is where mosquitoes came in or maybe bees all of a sudden had a stinger. I'm not sure, but all of a sudden there's pain in the earth, hurricanes and tornadoes, and there is pain in work. Work used to be a pleasure. God created us. Work can be a blessing. Work can be redeemed. We can be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth. That's the blessing. But here work becomes a curse, and there's sweat, and there's grinding, and you just can't wait till the weekend. Oh, I'm living for the weekend or my vacations. There's pain there. But then at the end is the ultimate curse, which is death. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. You see, God warned of this. He said, if you eat, you will die. But they ate, and then death was introduced, which is the ultimate curse. And But death has been defeated through Jesus Christ. Jesus defeated death. He took it on. He took on death and he defeated it so all who are in Christ can avoid the worst curse of all, which is eternal death. We can have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Jesus took on the, the, the sting of death, as 1 Corinthians 15 says, that the, the sting of death has been done away with because of Jesus Christ. The devil is crafty. Many of us have received curses. Now, here is a principle I want you to hold on to. The cursed 
will curse, but the blessed will bless. Let me say that again. The cursed will curse, but the blessed will bless. Jesus wants to crush all curses in your life so that you can receive and be replace the curses with blessings so that you can be a blessing to others. A curse is a verbal negative statement against you. A curse is a negative prayer said out loud. A curse is a negative thought pattern. A curse is something that sounds logical, but it is not biblical. Let me just explain some of these things. And I want to say that curses affect your life. Curses affect the way that you interpret life. And curses come in a number of different areas. But when you receive a curse, either you have brought it upon yourself or somebody else was evil against you and spoke a curse to you, you then begin to interpret life through that curse. And there's many different forms of curses. And these curses are like sunglasses or glasses that you put on. You see, we receive curses, and then all of a sudden we start to see life through these curses. Let me just give you some examples of different curses that can come. There's family curses. Maybe you didn't have a father around. Maybe you didn't have a mother. Maybe you have wounds from the family. These are curses, and it was right there in Genesis 3. But when you receive a wound, then you start to think like that. Oh, men cannot be trusted. I can't trust dads. I'm going to be a terrible mother myself. Maybe I'm going to get a divorce someday. You start to think this way. And one thing about glasses is your eyes are eventually adjust to where you think it's like reality. And again, the devil is crafty. He's crafty, and curses are something that sound logical, but it is not biblical. Let me mention another one. Another one is gender curses or sexual curses. You see, we receive these curses. Some people have been abused in their life. Some people have been physically abused by somebody of a different sexual, sexual uh, gender, and then you think, I can't trust men. I can't trust women. And you get these, these curses that come on you. And they're, they're, again, logical. They started with a wound, and it sounds right, but then you interpret life all through those curses. You also have racial curses. You see, you get blacks and whites fighting against each other. You get Hispanics and Asians fighting against each other to where you start to think in terms of these curses. And you start to think, oh, blacks are this way. Hispanics are this way. Whites are this way. All of them are this way because you've received a wound from one of these different people. And Sometimes it cannot even happen to you. Say it happens to my mother or my uncle. And then you, you adopt that curse on you as well. God did not create us this way. God wants us to be blessed. He wants to crush the curses. Some of these curses are mental. Some of these curses are mental. Some people may have told you early in life, you're stupid. How many of you have received a curse like that? You're stupid. You're, you're a loser. You're going to fail. You're a failure. You're clumsy. These are all curses that we receive from other people. Some of these are physical curses. We receive physical curses like you're fat or you're skinny. Ha, I got my skinny glasses on up here. Uh, your I was called a stick when I was growing up. You know, and it just, you start to view life like, oh, I'm skinny. 
I, I'm not strong enough. I'm not the male that I see uh, on the magazines. I'm not that, I don't have that physique. We all receive these curses and they come in a lot of different ways. You're, you're ugly, you're not beautiful, your lips are too big, your eyes are too skinny, your ears are too wide. It's disgusting. They did not come from God. God created us blessed. God created us in his image. God formed us, as we said last week. He knitted us together in our mother's womb. He gave you the body you have. He gave you the mind you have. He gave you the skin color you have. He wants you to live blessed. I want to just say one other one. Moral curses. A lot of us have received moral curses. You're always going to struggle with that sin. You're always going to get angry at your kids. You're always going to live with that addiction. You're always going to live with sexual sin. I was actually told that as a boy. I was told that it was okay to, to participate in sexual sin because I was a teenager and it's just what teenagers do. That is not biblical. It sounds logical, but it is not biblical. It is a curse. And God wants to crush the curses. Jesus died on the cross to become a curse. He took on all the mental curses. He took on all the moral curses. He took on all the physical curses so that he could crush them. He wants to take whatever glasses, whatever curse you have, he wants to put them under his feet and he wants to crush them. He wants to crush the curses in your life. I don't know what curses you're believing. I don't know what curses other people have put on you. Don't believe them. Take them off today. Take off the racial curses. Take off the moral curses. Take off the curses of the, the gender curses. Take off the family curses. You can start a new family. Start a new generation. Take off these, even the curse of the racism curse in America. It's terrible. We need to take that one off. Church has got to take that one off. Martin Luther King said the, the most segregated hour is the Sunday hour. I'm glad it's not true in our church, but I want to see it go around. I want to see more diversity here. We need to take off the curse and allow Jesus to crush the curses. You know, small things. I, I, I was told a lot that you'll, you always lose things, and I did. I lost a lot of things as a teenager. I was told, you always lose things. And the moment that I would misplace something, I would have that go through my mind. Oh, Stephen, you always lose things. You always lose things. Again, I had on glasses. You always lose things. Then it was told to me, and it was 10 years ago, I'll never forget it, where a curse is something that sounds logical, and it was, right? I was losing a lot of things, but it's not biblical. God didn't want me to lose things. So I rejected that curse. I said, no, I will not live underneath the curse of always losing things. I rejected it, and I replaced it with the blessing that God will help me find things. This was 10 years ago, and I am telling you, today, I don't lose things. I misplace things. Now, I have, I think I, I can literally count on one hand, and Emily's my witness, I still misplace things, but I can count on one hand the number of things I've actually lost. Jesus wants to replace curses. No matter how small they are, like you always lose things, or how big they are, like you're a loser, you're a failure, you're ugly, God wants to crush curses. Amen? Jesus became a curse. He took on all the curses. In the final curse of death, we all will die. There will be a place where all of us will die. But Jesus wants, he crushed the curse of death. So all who trust in Jesus can receive eternal life. 
God has created you for blessing. And if we want to have a summer of blessing, we need to first reject the curses. I'm going to have Steve Phillips come here, and he's going to lead us in a time of rejecting curses and replacing them with blessing. I just want to encourage you to open up your heart right now. Ask God, God, what curses have I been living with? What sunglasses have I put on? I want to take them off. I want to throw them down. And Jesus, I want you to take the curse and replace the curse with blessing. Paul says, bless and do not curse. If we want to be a blessing to others, if we want to speak blessing to others, we need to receive the blessing ourselves. If we don't want to be a curse to others, if we don't want to knock others and judge others and curse others, we need to have Jesus take that curse from us. So let's take off the curses and allow Jesus to crush the curses. Steve, if you can come up here and lead us as we reject curses and replace them with blessing. Amen. How many of you out here believe that Jesus has crushed every curse? Oh, we can hear some horns honking, some clapping. Jesus has crushed every curse. So one of the things that's, that's so powerful and that's, that, that Stephen has led us in is that even though Jesus has crushed every curse, we are still participants in receiving curses. Either things that have been done to us or things that we've brought upon ourselves. We live in a fallen world. Sin is here. And so we have to step into the life of Christ who crushes every curse to receive and to walk in the blessing. So I'd like for us to do this together. And if we're going to crush curses and we're going to crush Satan, it's hard to do that sitting down. So if you can, I'd like to encourage everyone to stand up. Even some of you might need to, to get out of your car to stand up. And if you're not going to get out or you're not going to stand up, that's okay. You're just going to take a posture uh, of standing. Sometimes we, we, can, we can take a posture of kneeling without kneeling. So if, you're, if you need to, to sit or stay in your car, take a posture even in your mind as you close your eyes. And a posture of standing, a posture of authority. And I'm going to encourage us uh, as we do this that you might need to get your your hand moving a little bit. We're going to make some, we're, we're going to make some prayers, but we're going to make some declarations. So, you know, you, you might need to even get a little bit of a battle stance on. All right. Um, because we're going to do, we're going to do some warfare and we're going to cut down all of these curses so that we can be free to receive the blessing. Amen. So we're going to start with prayer. Every time that we come against the enemy of our souls, we want to come in the right alignment, and so we want to submit to God. So we're going to start by submitting to God, and then we're going to crush the, the, <clears throat> the curses, and then we're going to receive the Holy Spirit and the blessing. Amen? So I'm just going to lead us in this. If you can repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I submit to you right now. I give you control of my body, my mind, my will, and my emotions. I confess my sins, any curses I have accepted and received. I also reject any curses I have brought upon myself. And I right now receive your full forgiveness. I invite you to be Lord of my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
All right, so when we're praying, we keep our eyes closed oftentimes to block out distractions. But when we, when we speak to Satan and we break curses, we keep our eyes open. Now, don't look straight at me. All right, keep your eyes open. Look up to the sky or on the ground. Or, and you can get a finger out if you need to. Um, or you can take that battle stance and you can chop away. You can stomp your foot. All right. And we're going to start with Satan, I bind you. OK, so, so you want to kind of get in that posture where you can speak. And, and you might say, well, who am I to bind Satan? Well, you, you are you have the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've just come in submission under him. And so you have this authority, not of your own doing. Not without Jesus in you. You've just made this declaration. I have Jesus in me. Amen. So just repeat this after me. Satan, I bind you. Satan, I bind you. Right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I renounce all satanic assignments. I renounce all satanic assignments. And curses directed toward me. And curses directed toward me. My family. And my ministry. And my ministry. I cancel out. I cancel out. All demonic working. All demonic working. That has been passed down to me. That has been passed down to me. From my family. From my family. I detach myself. Detach myself. From the line and lineage. From the line and lineage. Of my father and my mother. My father and my mother. And I right now. Right now. Attach myself. Attach myself. To the line and lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the line and lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. I announce to Satan. I announce to Satan. And all his forces. And all his forces. That Jesus became a curse for me. Jesus became a curse for me. When he died for my sins. When he died for my sins. On the cross. On the cross. I declare. I declare. That I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. I belong to the Lord Jesus Who purchased Christ. me with his own blood. Purchase me with his own blood. I now command. I now command. Every familiar spirit. Every familiar spirit. And every enemy of the Lord Jesus. Every enemy of the Lord Jesus. That is influencing me. Is influencing me. To leave my presence. To leave my presence. Go right now. Go right now. To the feet of the Lord Jesus. To the feet of the Lord Jesus. Every curse. Every curse. And every bondage. And every bondage. In my life. In my life. Is broken right now. Broken right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I commit myself. I commit myself. To my heavenly Father. My heavenly Father. To do His will. To do His will. And walk in His blessing. Walk in His blessing. From this day forward. From this day forward. Amen. Amen. Now, would you just open your hands? broken the curses and I believe it's not just a series of statements it's real the spirits are listening God is listening the angels are listening the demonic forces against us are listening and they're leaving now in the name of Jesus and so now we don't want to just be left empty from all these curses and all these assignments against us we want to receive a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit amen so repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I now receive from you, I now receive from you the, infilling of your Holy Spirit, the infilling of your Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take control of every area of my life. Take control of every area of my life. Reveal Jesus to me today. Reveal Jesus to me today. Give me everything I need. Give me everything I need. To walk in your blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to sing a song here. It's going to be a great song. And as we sing, I want to invite all of our health care workers. We've reached out to you this week. But if we can get the health care workers up here in front, how many of you are thankful for our health care workers? Yeah, we want to honor them today. So if you could, come on out. Let's sing a song together here.
Break the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows Of my soul The work is finished The end is written In Jesus Christ My living
Yes, you are. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many of you can say that Jesus crushed some curses today? Amen. All right, we want to celebrate these incredible people in front of us today, our healthcare workers. I want to recognize Rachel Ogintebi. We thank you, the Lord, for you. Nimi Fifidera, we thank the Lord for you. Lisa Glaze, we thank the Lord for you. Glenda Vargas, Jesse Joseph, Unhe Brock, Desmond Devry, and we thank God for Richard Lowry and Tonji Durant who are watching online. Let's praise the Lord for each of these and thank God for their service. Put out a hand as uh, we pray a prayer of blessing upon them. Father God, we thank you for each of those who are serving as nurses and research and assisting and in doctors, Lord, we bless each of the hospitals around us as they serve the community with health care. God, we do bless health, Lord. We thank you that you are the Lord, our healer. Lord, we do pray, God, that as they ministered to physical needs, that you would empower them supernaturally that they would not only meet physical needs, but spiritual needs, Lord, that they would be a blessing, that you would bless them so much that they would bless others that they are caring for. Lord, give them hope, give them strength, give them vision, Lord. Restore encouragement, God. They've given out a lot in these days. They put their lives on the lines in many ways. Lord, would you protect them, God. Protect them from the disease, Lord. Protect them from hopelessness. Protect them from fear, God, we pray protection over their families in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord, for them. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's thank these healthcare workers again. All right, we want to give our tithes and offerings just as you leave. There'll be people at the uh, exit, or you can bring it up here. We want to remember Jim and Heather Hatcher who are going to Israel in, um, in August, and we want to bless them with an offering as you bring your tithes. And uh, blessing booklet, if you haven't received this, this is a great journal for your family to go through the blessing. And if you complete it, you'll get a blessing certificate and a Brewster's gift card, a chance to get a Brewster's gift card. Grab one of these if you haven't gotten one. Youth, you can stay around. We're having Sunday fun day. Uh, receive the blessing of the Lord before you leave. Just hold out your hands. Receive the blessing of God. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Lord bless you today as you go. Awesome day together. Hallelujah.